All right, folks, so in today's video, we're gonna take a look at this amplifier. It is the Neptune 100 watt HF and six meter amplifier. It has auto band switching. It also uh, has a URL down here at uh, www.60dbm.com where you can check this out and you can pick it up for about $399. They also sell some accessories like control cables and things like that that you might be interested in. Um, here you can turn on band switching, I believe. It shows you when you're transmitting and it highlights the band that is in use. Let's take a quick look at the back of this thing. You can see we have RF in, RF out, and then we have a PTT like for a keyer or a, or a buffer that I'm going to use. I'll show you how I set that up. This is not necessary, um, but it's useful, and I, I would recommend that you use something like that when you do this. If you take a look at it, it has some rather large heat sinks, and uh, this is for passive cooling. So you may choose to point a little fan at this if you're using it and driving it pretty hard. I've used it quite a bit, and uh, it does get warm, but I didn't push it beyond its limits. Um, it does say 100 watts on here, and I did get more than that out with a relatively low drive power. We're going to test this out in this video, and we're going to drive it with a IC705 from ICOM. Let's take a quick look at the size. If I line it up on here, you can see that it is one, two, three, four. It's about four and three quarters inches wide. If I take a look at the height of this thing, we're looking at about two and three quarters, three inches tall. And I believe it's around seven. Let's just count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six. It uh, is around seven and uh, what is it? Seven, three quarters inches deep. Um, if you count these BNC connectors now, I typically would use a BNC cable or an adapter with an SO239 um, plug on the end of that. So my coaxial cable can go into it. And I bought this because um, I did want a 100 watt option when operating outside of my QTH. I don't really go portable and do soda and poda and that kind of thing, but I do travel uh, often and I like to take a radio with me and I wanted to have a 100 watt amplifier. Here's another amplifier that I have and I just want to do it for comparison. I want to show this. Um, this is the Micro PA50 Plus and with this Micro PA50 Plus, um, you can see it's much smaller, but it's around a 50 watt amplifier. It does have a fan, so it does have active cooling, which is pretty nice. But uh, you can see that there's considerable size difference here. So if you're looking for high speed, low drag, something like this might be an option. Um, here's also the Micro PA50. Um, when I tested this out, I did see some harmonics on some of the bands. I want to say it was around 20 and 15 meters. I don't remember exactly, but I do have videos on this. But I was looking for a little bit different option, and I ended up with this. From concept to creation, PCBWay.com is with you every step of the way. We provide high quality PCB manufacturing and assembly with precision, speed, and affordability. Enjoy fast production, worldwide shipping, and outstanding customer support. Whether you're a maker or an industry pro, trust PCBWay.com to turn your vision into reality. Visit PCBWay.com today. So I wanted to talk a little bit about how we're going to set everything up and I figured it would be easier to do it this way and then I'll show you each piece of equipment separately. But first we have our radio over here and this is going to be the IC705 and it is going to be powered with its internal battery which is okay because we only need a few watts to drive the amp. Now from the radio we're going to have two different connections. One is going to go through a keyer or buffer that we use to provide some isolation between the radio and the amp and to directly key the amp. This amp is self-sensing, but I like to use a key buffer anyway because I'm cautious. We're also going to have a piece of coaxial cable connected from the radio to the amplifier to drive the amp. And then the amplifier output goes to an SWR slash power meter. And then the output of that is going to go into the dummy load. Now the SWR power meter that we have, I'll show it to you, um, has a separate display that is connected via two cables. One cable monitors voltage, one monitors current that goes through the power meter. So it's going to be a little bit of a complex setup in order to do this, but I believe it's the appropriate way and should give us the results we're looking for. Okay, let's take a look at the equipment. All right, folks, so let's take a look at the equipment we're going to be using today. Um, the first thing is that we're going to be using this, the IC705. I talked a little bit about it. Um, over here, we have a send ACL port, ALC port, I should say. Um, that's going to connect into our buffer. 
and then here's our RF out over here that we're going to connect into our contraptions. Let's take a quick look. This thing is called a directional coupler, and you have a transmitter and your load, which is either your antenna, or in this case, we're going to use a dummy load. Um, here are two connections to sample um, current and voltage, and the cable is going to come from the 705 into the transmitter side. <clears throat> These two BNC ports connect into this device, which is the display for the LP100A. And this is our digital vector RF watt meter, and it's got all these nice controls on it. And then on the back, we've got all kinds of things here. You can hook a PTT relay here. We're not going to do that. We're just going to connect the current and voltage things up here. And it also has this RS-232 for PC control and some software that you can run on that. Let me go ahead and get this stuff out of the way. This is the buffer that we're going to use in between our radio and, and amplifier. And it's from hamgadgets.com. And so we have this one cable here, which is the power source for this. We're going to connect that up. Um, this side here, it says to amplifier relay control. And this is from the radio amp keen. So when we talked about the output on here is going to go into the input here. <clears throat> We're going to use this cable to do that. And then from the amp side here, it's going to go into the amplifier that we're going to use for testing right here. And then the RF out from here is going to go into our dummy load. <clears throat> for that, we're going to use the cell wave dummy load. I think this is good for up to 250 watts. And it has a sample tap on it. Uh, oh, one a couple other things. <clears throat> In terms of power, we are going to be using this MFJ power distribution block. It's a six-way desktop DC power distribution block. Not the best thing in the world, but uh, it's what we got. And finally, to power all this stuff up, we're going to be using the MFJ4230 DMP for digital, I don't know, something power. So that's going to be it. Let me get it all plugged up, and uh, we'll come back and start doing the testing. Okay, so here we go. We are going to start testing and getting all this stuff set up was a colossal pain in the behind. But uh, we're set up at uh, 1.9 megahertz, so we're going to start on the 80 meter band. And I want to set this over to ready. And I'm going to check right here. And right now we're set up at 10%, which would be around one watt. So let's go ahead and fire this baby up and see what happens. And you can see on the amp, we're at around 36.5 watts. You can see we're drawing around 7.9 amps. So let's go ahead and turn this up to about 2. And now we are at 67 watts output from the amp. Let's go to 2.5. And, and we are at 94.6. Let's go to 2.6. 98.2, 2.8. At 96.3, let's go up to 3 watts. <clears throat> and it's saying 106. Now, what I need to do is I need to get this thing hooked up to a spectrum analyzer because I want to be able to check for harmonics that are induced when we go past the linearity point of the amplifier and start to saturate the transistor or the final outputs on that. Uh, not going to test that in this video. This video is just showing that we can get with about three watts in, we get about 106 watts out. So let's go ahead and switch this baby over to 80 meters. And I guess we'll test it 3.975. 3 um, let's key up. And we are getting 127 watts out. Now I'm sure that... Uh, well, that sounds awesome and cool. It's probably not the right thing to be doing. So let's turn this down to 2.2 watts. And right at 101 watts out of the amplifier, which is awesome. Let's go over and test this baby on 40 meters. And I will just test it uh, 7.042. And with the 2.2 watts out, we're getting 115 out of the amps. So let's turn this down to 1.8. It's at 93. Let's go up to 2. 105 watts out. Awesome, right? Let's go ahead and switch this baby down to 30. And uh, we'll just key up here. And when we key up, we are getting 109 watts out. Let's see what this is. Let's turn it down to 1.8. 96.8 watts. I think it's showing that it does the thing. 
Let's go ahead and drop down to 20 meters. And I'm going to have to adjust this. And that's showing 114 watts out. Let's go ahead and turn down to 1.5 and see what we get. 113 out. 190, I'm sorry, 98.5 out with 1.3 watts in. All right, let's go to 17 meters, which is uh, somewhere around 18 megahertz right there. And it's giving us 95.7 watts out of the amp. Let's go up to 15 or 1.5 watts. Driving us 106 watts. Let's go to 12. Did we do 15? We did not do 15. Let's go to 15, which is in our 21 megahertz. And that showed 94.6 watts out. Let's go up to 1.7 watts drive. 97.1. Let's go up to 2. It's 98.5. Let's go to 2.5. 100 watts right on the button. And that is awesome. So let's go to 12, 12 megahertz. Which I'm sorry, 12, 12 meter band, which is uh, 24 megahertz. And it says 75.1 watts out. Let's go up to 3.5 watts and see what happens. 78 watts out. Let's go up to 4. 93 watts out. Let's go up to 4.5. We're not going to be able to go much higher. 80 watts. I think we can only go up to 50%. Yeah. So 84.7 watts. That's probably a drive issue with uh, with not using an external battery on the 705. Let's go ahead and see what happens on 10 meters, which is 28. 104 watts out right there. And we are still at 5. Now it's saying 119. Let's turn this thing down. Oops. Four and a half watts of drive, 105 watts out. And finally, we wanted to test six meters. And that is down here in the 50s. And let me just switch this over to ready. Oh, that's at 145 watts. That's way more than I want. Let me take this down to... Let's start with three watts of drive. 154 watts out. Let's go down to one watt of drive. 128. Let's go down to a half a watt. There we are at 78 watts out. Let's go to 0.7 watts. 101. So this um this thing is cool as a cucumber. What I wanted to demonstrate is that with very low drive, we can get 100 watts out with this. I think we did have a little bit of a, of a challenge. I think it was on 12 meters, if I remember correctly. But uh, that's really going to wrap this video up. Um, at some point, I'll do a spectral purity test on this, but that's not going to be today. As always, I'd like to thank everybody for watching. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. Thank you.